This is part two of my video review of the Owan SDS7102, which is a new DSO just recently brought to market by Owan. Hopefully this will help other people who are in the same boat I was, looking for the best buy they can find in a 100 megahertz DSO for under, let's say, around the $550 mark. Those of you who've been reading um, what I've been posting at EEV blog about um, you know, my tests and my findings, know that I've gone through something akin to the seven stages of grief um, in terms of my feelings towards the device, disbelief, denial, anger, whatnot. But um, as I've used it more and more, I've started to grow to really appreciate what it can do, even though I'm you know, still a little, little disappointed in the underdeveloped firmware. Um, but I have decided to keep the scope and um, I'll, I'll try to explain the reasons why through the rest of this review. So now we're booted up, ready to display waveforms. Um, the display is 800 by 600 pixels. Uh, just as a comparison to the rival screen, I, I cut a little piece of paper to indicate the size, so this will give a better idea of what's going on here. You can see there's quite a lot of extra screen real estate on the O1 compared to the Rigol. So let's take a look at the menu system in the O1. Whenever you press a button which generates a menu, meaning these two vertical menus, the horizontal menu trigger or any of the function keys, the O1 produces a menu, the first of sometimes three menus, down here in this section of the screen. So for example, if I take measure, I get the menu down here with the selections add or remove. Let's say I choose add, the second menu or the submenu will pop up here on the right side of the screen. Sometimes one of these buttons will generate yet a third submenu. For example, if I select type for the type of measurement I want to add, the third menu will appear here on the left side of the screen. Whenever the left side menu appears, it means you can scroll through it with the multipurpose knob, for example. Now, I understand from a design point of view why Owan did it this way. At least I think I do. I'm guessing it's two reasons. One is, of course, they keep the screen clear in the middle as much as possible for the displayed waveform. And secondly, having the first menu appear down here, and this menu down here is always there unless you've selected a different menu. This is only used for menu display. But having it appear down here gives you the option of, of being able to change some things without having to invoke a menu button again. For example, if I have the trigger menu on and I've, I've got a waveform up and I'm changing the settings to display the waveform, I can select and change trigger options while I'm doing that without, without having to go back to the trigger menu button. There's three little kinks or faults with this system that aren't completely ironed out, let's say, from my point of view which I'll briefly describe. The first is because you sometimes have three menus, so you have the first menu here, second, third, your hand does this a lot. Up here, down here, back over to here. Now ergonomically speaking, this movement back and forth isn't the brightest. So Personally, from my point of view, even though I do like some menus appearing here and remaining here, I wouldn't mind having some of the menus, which have perhaps only one submenu, starting here as opposed to here. But maybe that would be confusing for some users because some menu buttons would pr produce the first menu here or some here. Um, but that's just my own feeling about it. Secondly, this area of the screen is only reserved for the menu display, and that's a little bit of a shame. It would be nice to, be, to have the option of turning that off and using that area of the screen for more of these measurements. So that's a second little fault I see with the system. The third is that the idea of this being permanently displayed while you're doing other things with the waveform is great, but it's not well implemented. For example, if I select the trigger menu, I have these options for um, type of trigger, source, coupling, the slope, and then sweep options. You'll notice down here, well maybe you can't see in the video, but for example for slope you've got you know positive and negative edges. And by pressing this button I can just alter between the two. And if the trigger menu's up while I'm looking at a waveform I can do that without having to go back to the menu buttons. 
But Owen has seen fit to only allow this toggling of options when there's only two. If, for example, I want to change the coupling of the trigger, I click here, I get a, the second menu again with four options. And then, so I, let's say I've got that high frequency filter on and I want to go back to AC coupling, I have to click that and then come back up here again. Personally, for things with, say, three or four options, I would rather just go one, two, three and get to that option as opposed to bring, clicking this and bringing my hand back up here again. So uh, I think that could be implemented a little better so that you could just toggle through your various options here without having to go to another menu and cluttering the screen up. Let's take a look at the display of data on the Owen screen. You've got down here in the bottom right corner, just above the menu line, the type of trigger and the trigger level. Here towards the center of the screen, you've got the seconds per division you're set at. Across here over in the bottom left-hand corner, you've got the data for the two channels, including the volts per division, the coupling, as well as the level. Next to that, you've got something that's very nice. You've got the sampling speed and the depth set. And you can see as I change the seconds per division, that alter. So you always know exactly what speed you're sampling at. Below that area, you've got a, an area for user-defined measure, measurements. Now, this was one of the frustrating things about the Owen to me when I first started using it. I thought, well, I can only fit in four measurements, which doesn't feel like enough for me, especially when you consider the, the large screen. And of course, I didn't read the manual. Um, later, I discovered while reading the manual that, in fact, more than four fit. I'll show you what happens when you start to add extras. So we'll come in here and just start sticking some more in. There's a third. There's a fourth. Now you think, I thought it was like the Rigel. If I add any more than four, it'll pop the first one out and the new one will take its place or move to the bottom of the list. Instead, what happens is this. Strangely, it pops the channel data and the sample rate and depth outside of that area and makes room for four more measurements. Um, so that means you can have up to eight user measurements on the real-time measurements on the screen at a time, which um, I think is, is enough for most um, usage. I think the biggest failing of the OON firmware is that they have yet to take advantage of this great big screen they've installed in these models. As I mentioned before, this portion of the screen can only be used for menus. Um, there's no way to turn that off. Um, they only have course control for the volts uh, per division adjustment, so you can't maximize the wave to fill the screen entirely. And they also don't use dual window mode for anything, so you can't use it for FFT and you can't um, have a, the waveform record here and a zoomed in portion here. They haven't implemented dual windows yet, which, which seems a real shame on such a large display. I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the features I do like about the OON, apart from its screen size. And one of those things is the amount of memory it has for samples. You can see down here right now I have the sample depth set to 1K, but you can change that length between 1K, 10K, 100K, 1 meg, and up to 10 meg, which is kind of amazing. I'm going to put that on 10 meg right now. Now the scope is reporting it's going to sample at 1 giga samples a second with a depth of 10 mega points. So I'm going to trigger a single sweep of some digital noise. Now we're going to zoom out. And if my math is correct, we should end up with a record length of 10 milliseconds. And you see when we get to the 5 milliseconds per division that there's, it's two divisions long, so it's 10 milliseconds. I've now got both channels enabled and you can see that the sample speed is at 500 mega samples a second. That means the ADCs are running non-interleaved at the moment. I'll get into that more when I start talking about the insides of the Owen in the final part of this review. But right now I'm going to trigger another sweep. Now as I zoom out, you can see the Owen has an astounding 10 milliseconds pre-trigger information here because of the massive 10 megabytes of memory. Both the OON and the Rigel allow you to record wa waveforms up to 1,000 frames at up to 1,000 seconds apart. 
Obviously, the OON with its 10 megabytes of memory is going to allow um, much more detail in that waveform recording. Also, as far as I know, the OON is the only one that allows you to take that waveform record and play it back through the pass-fail output, which is really a nice feature. Another nice feature that the OON has that the Rigel is missing is that when you use pass-fail, you can use as input to the rule for source not only channel one or channel two, but also math of the two channels combined, and that's very nice. Another good idea from Owen is that the output at the back, which is normally reserved for pass-fail, can be switched actually so that it's either the pass-fail output or it's a synchronous trigger level output. So that means that you can trigger the scope and the trigger can pass through to other devices. So I happen to have the output at the back fed back into channel two here, which we're going to turn on. You'll notice as I expand the time base that the trigger out is delayed by about 1.25 microseconds from the trigger in. Also notice the curve in the waveform here. The trigger out is uh, optically isolated and I don't have it uh, pulled high or anything. I'm just running it directly into channel 2 so that's why you've got this curve on the waveform instead of a nice sharp edge. But this is a handy little feature. You can see as I zoom out on the waveform that the trigger signal goes high, the trigger and stays high for the rest of the sweep. The last feature I wanted to mention about the OM, which I think is really great, is the VGA output. Down here you can turn it on or off. Now you may wonder with such a large screen, why would anyone ever need VGA output? Well, I can think of two good reasons for it. You might be doing something over here which is causing your scope over there to be triggered and it's nice to be able to see the waveform from a distance. Now I know you could just record the waveforms and then play them back later, but A, that isn't real time and B, it means walking back and forth. Or secondly, you might be doing something at your computer that's related to the measurements you're making, such as running logic analyzer software or something in which case it's not that handy to have to keep looking away from the computer screen to check the oscilloscope screen, so it's nice to have all the data directly in front of you. Um, I've got the oscilloscope data up on the second VGA screen, but if I happen to have one of those cheap $15 VGA to video converters, I could just run it directly into the larger screen and use the picture-in-picture the picture and have it displayed here, and I wouldn't need the second screen. So this wraps up the second part of my video review of the Owen SDS 7102 where I talked a little bit about some of the faults and some of the features of the firmware. In the next and final part I'm going to talk a little bit about the insides of the Owen.